So let us now see uh, the cycle. There are two cells which are involved and the first or upper cell which we are drawing is the mesophyll cell and the second cell where this reaction is going to continue is bundle sheet cell. We are drawing only two cells but as we have already seen that there are many layers of mesophyll cells and uh, deeper there is a bundle sheet. So this is the bundle sheet cell. Now what happens is carbon dioxide diffuses into the mesophyll cells. That means here there is this epidermis and carbon dioxide is diffusing in. So from here carbon dioxide comes in. This carbon dioxide reacts with water molecule which is already there in the cell. In presence of the enzyme called, I'm putting a star or asterisk here. So this is for the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. This carbonic anhydrase helps in formation of carbonic acid and then this carbonic acid is going to dissociate. So here we will write it in short but in detail what is happening is water and carbon dioxide they react. This is the enzyme which is helping in formation of carbonic acid and this carbonic acid then dissociates into H plus and bicarbonate ions. So basically here the carbon dioxide which is accepted is in the form of bicarbonate ion. So just to save space here we have written the detailed reaction here but what is happening is carbon dioxide when comes in reacts with water in presence of carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid which dissociates to give this a bicarbonate ion. This bicarbonate ion is accepted by phosphoenol pyruvate. So let us write down this PEP stands for phosphoenol pyruvate. This phosphoenol pyruvate is a three carbon compound. So this phosphoenol pyruvate takes this bicarbonate ions and forms a four carbon compound which is oxaloacetic acid. So next is oxalo oxaloacetic acid. This is a four carbon compound and that is why this cycle is also known as C4 cycle. The reason we are, why we called Kelvin cycle C3 cycle was the first stable compound was a three carbon compound and here the first compound which is formed is a four carbon compound. An enzyme is required because here also there is carboxylation which is taking place and this carboxylation is helped by an enzyme called PEPCO that is PEPCO and this PEPCO stands for PEP that is phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. This enzyme will also help in addition of carbon dioxide. In C3 we talked about Rubisco but Rubisco's behavior changes in conditions. So here carbon dioxide is taken by a 3 carbon compound to form a 4 carbon compound in presence of an enzyme that is PEPCO and PEPCO that is PEP carboxylase acts as only carboxylase whether the conditions are with warmer temperature or lower. So here there is no problem in carboxylation. This oxaloacetic acid can either change into malic acid or there is one more possibility. We will write that possibility here. Oxaloacetic acid 
undergoes amination that is amino group if it gets added then it will change into aspartic acid so there are two possibilities oxaloacetic acid can change into malic acid or it can undergo amination and change into aspartic acid whether it is malic acid or aspartic they would diffuse into the bundle sheet cells so now malic acid has diffused into the bundle sheet if it was aspartic acid that would also have must have diffused in the, uh, the bundle sheet cell or would diffuse here now this is a four carbon compound this four carbon compound dissociates into a three carbon compound and one carbon is given out in the form of carbon dioxide so malic acid which is a four carbon compound formed from oxaloacetic acid which is also a four carbon compound this malic acid or if it was aspartic acid then also same thing would happen malic acid or aspartic acid would diffuse into two parts one would have one carbon in the form of carbon dioxide and the other one is pyruvate or pyruvate acid which is a three carbon compound this pyruvic acid would diffuse back into mesophyll cells so now pyruvic acid is here pyruvic acid is without phosphate and phosphoenol pyruvate has phosphorus so this undergoes phosphorylation atp is required and this atp breaks to release energy and changes into amp that means two bonds of atp are broken down we write atp as adenosine one phosphate second phosphate and third phosphate if only one breaks we get adp if these two bonds break we get only adenosine monophosphate that means when one atp breaks two phosphate bonds are broken this one as well as this that is the third and the second both in other words if we are calculating the number of atps we can consider this as two atps also see if this breaks and we get adenosine monophosphate from atp to amp there are two phosphate bonds which are broken this is one way of writing it second way can be two atps are broken down and we get two adps here also only two bonds are broken and here also only two bonds are broken so when we are saying one atp breaking into one amp it can also be concluded as two atps are required and two adps will be synthesized basically we are talking about how many phosphate bonds are broken from atp to amp two phosphate bonds are broken and if we talk of two atp into two adp still there are two phosphate bonds are broken now this phosphoenol pyruvate gets regenerated what is happening in the bundle sheet now is carbon dioxide is released this carbon dioxide will be accepted by rubp rubellose biphosphate the enzyme which is required for this is rubisco that means here the enzyme is rubisco and this rubisco in these bundle sheet cells would act as carboxylase because the two reasons or problems in which rubisco's behavior changed from carboxylase to oxygenase have been taken care of first condition was higher temperature in normal c3 plants this cycle takes place in mesophyll cells mesophyll cells are in the upper layer so temperature is higher in c4 plants the site where rubisco works has been shifted into deeper cells that is cells of bundle sheet so temperature is comparatively lower as compared to mesophyll in bundle sheet cells it is slightly lower temperature first problem taken care of 
Second was oxygen. If oxygen concentration is more, then also Rubisco acts as oxygenase. We know that oxygen is released during light reaction, non-cyclic photophosphorylation. And in C4 plants, non-cyclic photophosphorylation or light reaction takes place in mesophyll cell. That means these are the cells where oxygen is released. And here it is only carbon dioxide which is made available to Rubisco. So Rubisco has no other option but to undergo or help in the process of carboxylation. So this process will continue. Say first it is going to be carboxylation, then reduction and then regeneration. And glucose will be synthesized. So this cycle is actually C3 cycle. So in C4 plants, they have or these plants have shifted the site of C3 cycle. Instead of mesophyll cells, now it takes place in bundle sheet cells. And by doing this, Rubisco will always act as carboxylase. So the problem of photorespiration will never be seen in case of C4 plants. So now what has happened in C4? Carbon dioxide was taken in bicarbonate ions are formed. How are they formed that we have written down? This carbon dioxide is accepted by a three carbon compound that is phosphoenol pyruvate to form a four carbon compound that is oxaloacetic acid and that is why the cycle is known as C4 cycle. Oxaloacetic acid changes into malic acid or can change into aspartic acid. If it was malic acid, then malic acid would diffuse. If it was aspartic acid, aspartic acid would diffuse. And both malic or aspartic acids are four carbon compounds. They would dissociate into a three carbon compound that is pyruvic acid and a one carbon containing carbon dioxide. So this carbon dioxide is now available for C3 cycle. It will be accepted by RUBP and the enzyme which is going to help is Rubisco. And here it is going to act as carboxylase only and glucose synthesis will take place. Pyruvic acid diffuses into mesophyll cells, undergoes phosphorylation to change into phosphoenol pyruvate. This is the entire process which takes place. We have seen that in C3 cycle, in C3 cycle, ATPs which are required for one glucose synthesis, ATP per glucose molecule were 18. Now if a plant has adapted itself and starts showing C4 cycle, then how many ATPs would be required? C3 cycle is taking place, that means the number of ATPs that is 18 is anyways going to be required here. So, in C4 plants, ATP per glucose is what we are trying to calculate. Every time one carbon dioxide is taken in, that means six times this has to be done. And we said one ATP into AMP is equivalent to two ATPs changing into two ADPs. So, we will count this number. So one carbon dioxide brought into the bundle sheet for C3 cycle needs two extra ATPs. That means if six carbon dioxides are required, we would need double that. One carbon would take two, so six would take, so six would take 12 ATPs more. So it will be 12 extra and 18 which are of C3 cycle anyways required. So this number will be 30 ATPs. So this is an expensive process and the reason why it is expensive is this is the place where more ATPs are required. But by spending 12 ATPs more, the plant has solved the problem of photorespiration in which all that carbon which was fixed in photosynthesis was being or was getting released. So in these plants, that is C4 plants like maize, sugarcane and sorghum, 
there is no problem of photorespiration. And how have they achieved this thing? They showed two adaptations. One was dimorphic chloroplast. Mesophyll has granule chloroplast. That means here light reaction takes place. And bundle sheet cells have a granule chloroplast. That means dark reaction or C3 cycle takes place in bundle sheet. So one was this adaptation. Second was Krenz anatomy in which there are thick walled bundle sheet cells arranged in the form of a wreath. So wreath like arrangement. By these two adaptations, what have these plants achieved is that light reaction takes place in mesophyll cells. Carbon dioxide is accepted by a different molecule other than RUBP. Another enzyme that is PEPCO helps which always acts as a carboxylase. So Rubisco's problem is not there. Oxaloacetic acid which is a 4 carbon compound is formed. Then it changes into either malic acid or aspartic acid which is a 4 carbon compound. It gives pyruvic acid which is a 3 carbon goes back. One carbon is released in the form of carbon dioxide which participates in C3 cycle. And here ATP is required. So in C4 pathway, C3 definitely takes place. But there is an additional pathway which is there. So C4 plants show both C4 as well as C3. And that is why the ATP requirement is more. 12 ATPs as a part of that extra C4 and 18 ATPs as a part of C3 which is normal. And that is total 30 ATPs are required. So in only C3 plants which show C3 cycle, 18 ATPs are required and C4 need 30 ATPs. So by spending extra ATP molecule, the plants has or the plants have resolved or solved the problem of photorespiration. So these are C4 plants and we will also compare uh, the changes or the processes which take place in C3 and C4.